Hello everyone, welcome to another video where I, a Tupi astronomer, reacts to kryptonite physics, very likely misunderstanding of simple classical mechanics once again. Now we are talking about this video, measure a constant velocity question mark, that was released two days ago, as it is right now. Um, it was also mirrored by Taboo Conspiracy, which someone in my comment section has pointed out is the Flat Earth seal of approval. So, you know, it's going to be a wild one. Let's have a look. And beforehand, I should mention that I'm not at my usual setup. I'm recording this from my laptop, kind of on the go, uh, with, with my old pair of headphones. So I hope the audio is not too bad and you can understand me as clear as you want. You're traveling at a constant speed in a straight line. In physics, this is called a constant velocity. If the windows yes. were blacked out, could you tell that you're moving? No. Is there some no. way, with some sort of measuring device, you could measure the fact that you're moving at a constant velocity? Now, in relativity, you could construct a machine like of some sort of atomic clock that can tell you, if you have a reference point, uh, how fast you're going relative to something else, right? But if, if we're in a black box, and especially in classical mechanics, absolutely not. Relativity, or relative motion, tells us you cannot measure it. That is correct. In this video, we will show that you can. I, I, I can't wait for a f guy in the UK with no physics education whatsoever toppling the last 400 years of uh, classical mechanics. Let's see your 80 Nobel To Prize demonstrate you this, we will first world. carry out some experiments. Tim and I will be driving our rocket car. I want a rocket car. That's unfair. Simon on the right is going to be the observer. The aim is to measure the amount of force that applies as the car carries out two different maneuvers. The first will be driving in a circle at a constant velocity. That is correct. The second drive will not be at a constant. I mean, it still looks like constant velocity to me, but okay. Using a load cell. Fastening the cell to the cars in a bodywork. Then attach a mass to the top of the cell. The load cell sends out a changing charge that is proportional to the amount of force being put you on could it. have just said accelerometer there, but we get what you mean as well. This information will be shown on a graph. Due to centrifugal acceleration, the load from the mass pushing against the load cell remains at a constant value. That is correct. Our observer, from outside and inside the circle of rotation, Knowing the distance of the mass from the center, and its velocity, works out the same result as the graph. The second maneuver. A blue ball is moving across the track, at a constant velocity. The observer, observes that the car is accelerating and decelerating to catch up and then fall behind the ball. From Simon's observation position, we are not at a constant velocity. The readout from the graph, and our drive experience confirms Simon's observation. As the car increases and decreases in speed, the curves represent the force change at each point on the load cell. Now, whilst, whilst I agree that the velocity is obviously not uh, a constant anymore, um, I disagree with the changing charge of the load cell. Uh, now, it might not seem obvious yet as to why, because they're using a bit of a strange example here with, with a ball rolling across a track and you driving after it. And, and if you think about driving experience, you know, there are a lot of factors in there, such as friction and like wind resistance, which technically is friction again, and other forces acting upon your car, like gravity, and, and the road not being perfect. So, you know, that that's a, not, not, not a good example, I'd say, but they, they get into what they mean later on. And I will comment on that. From this point to the top, the mass is decreasing in velocity, going in this direction. From the top to the bottom, it's then increasing its velocity. We'll go into more detail on this at the end of this section. The observer Simon, by changing his position, can he change the readings from the load cell? No, that's impossible. He is only the observer, he has no influence on the correct. mass in the car. Simon's new position cannot change Very the correct. readings on the graph. The only thing that has changed is what he can observe from that also new correct. position. From this point, his observation calculations will be totally different no, than before. They really shouldn't. <laughs> they really should, uh, because uh, 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 constant change in velocity does not contribute to the measurement of any forces. 
like a constant velocity, cannot change how much force you measure anywhere. Relative to him, but I'll, I'll get into more detail as to why that is. I'm not just saying it. I will have calculations ready, of course, for that, or like an explanation rather. And will look like the car is just rotating at a constant. It would have looked like that uh, to him beforehand. That the readings on the graph should be straight with no deviation. The observer Simon makes two different calculations. Only that the is one because on the technically the car and the observer are not within the same inertial reference frame, which makes things difficult and depending on how the situation is impossible to calculate. Now with this example it is of course very easy because we Simon would just have to figure out that the, the rocket car is going in a circle around the center point and the center point has a constant velocity. That is not trivial to figure out, but once he's there, he can only arrive at the conclusion that the force remains a constant. F matches the readout from the load cell. The absolute value of the force, obviously not its direction. But that's... The relative motion analysis on the right, for the mass on the load cell, is incorrect. Simon is deceived into thinking no, this is the reality. The analysis on the right is the only correct thing here. T for our mass. Looking at the screen, do you see constant velocity? No. Two accelerations are happening at the same time. No, what happens here is you see the constant velo velocity of the center of the rotation of the rocket car, as well as the rotation of the rocket car added over each other. The velocity is not a constant, yet the force is. And I will explain in a bit why. The rotation part of our motion, we get centripetal acceleration giving us a constant centrifugal force of the mass against the load cell. That is correct. This is represented by the red dashed line on the graph. That is correct. As seen from your observation. As we are also moving in this direction, the mass now has an ever-changing rate of acceleration. This change gives us an ever-changing force on the load cell, in addition to the rotation force alone. And that's wrong. You see, you're adding up here the linear velocity to the tangential velocity which is fine if you want to calculate how fast to an outstanding observer, how fast the object appears to be. But if you're just calculating for force, the only thing that is contributing to the force is the tangential velocity, not the linear one. I will explain that with a... The combination of both accelerations give us the readings we get on our graph. It does not. Very much not. You, you are misunderstanding here the addition of velocities and how a centrifugal force uh, uh, arises. This happens to any mass on a rotation. Which happens if you don't pay attention in physics class in school. When the rotation center is moving at a constant velocity. The observer's position cannot change this. Which are wrong, but you know. And now the apparatus. Moving at a constant velocity is a person contained within a sealed compartment with one-way glass. Okay. The apparatus consists of two load cells, each with the same mass placed at the top. Mm -hmm. The load cells fasten to the rotating platform at the edge, placed opposite to each other, to balance the system. The platform's rotational speed is set to a constant value. This can be adjusted if needed. As with the car, just rotating, the graph is showing a constant force from the mass against the load cell. That is correct. The container is now moving at a constant velocity. We now see the two telltale curves on the chart. We don't. <laughs> you're, you're making these the peak up of each... also, even if they were there, don't you think that they would increase in the same way as they would decrease? Because you're just going back to your baseline here, not below. If anything, it should go below as well, but it doesn't. I want to make this clear, it doesn't. But even like you're you're even wrong with your being wrong, which is pretty impressive. Curve indicates the line of travel. The direction along that line cannot be determined. If the constant velocity rate was greater, the dynamics of the two curves would change. It should be possible. No, they wouldn't, because they're not exist. Possible to gauge the actual velocity by analyzing the shape. 
Now, even if, like, okay, the, the thing that gets me here is how can you think that something this obvious, we're talking not university level physics, we're talking high school level physics, in some places possibly middle school level physics, how do you think that generations upon generations of physicists have learned classical mechanics, have had to write exams in classical mechanics, and not figure this out for themselves? Now, there are two possibilities. Either they all, for the last 400 years since Galileo came up with, with relative motion uh, uh, translations and things, right? Imagine if in the last 400 years, every physics student didn't come up with this, right? And you now have, that's the one possibility, or the other possibility is that you misunderstood something, which is okay. It's fine to misunderstand physics. But don't go around and telling other people that they don't know anything about it. That, that, that's the thing that gets me here. So out of these two possibilities, you pick the one where you say, no, 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 everyone else is wrong and I'm just right, which is, I would argue, one of the prerequisites for being actually a flat earther, but that's another subject. By changing position, an observer can only change their perception of what is happening. Imprint. They physically cannot change anything. Very correct. The observer from this position in space observes the rotating apparatus placed here. It is also moving at a constant velocity with the ground at over 500 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. Knowing the mass's distance from the center of the apparatus and its velocity, they calculate the same readings as the graph. When the Again, the graph's wrong here. It doesn't have those two bumps. Observer changes position, the graph's readout remains the same. Only their perception of what is happening to the mass changes. If we see no curves on the graph, the ground is not moving. No, we see no curves on the graph either way. If it's not moving, we don't live on this. I would urge you to, to actually try this experiment and train or, or like in a sufficiently long car track or something of the similar and you will find that you're very, very wrong. And I will actually explain a bit why you're wrong. So we have here my trusty notebook. Now, classical mechanics for kryptonite physics. Chris, please pay attention. You very desperately need it. Also, the book conspiracy. Why did you mirror this? This is an absolute train wreck of, of, of any physical understanding. I am lost for words of how embarrassing this must be. Okay, so let's say we have an object that moves constantly on a circular uh, uh, kind of track, if you will. The centrifugal force here, Fg, is, those are two equal representations, is the mass times the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius, or that is the same as the mass times the angular velocity squared times the radius. Now, the angular velocity is how much of, how like, which angle in which time the, the, the thing that you're rotating passes, right? And as you've said yourself, this omega, this angular velocity here, stays the same. We could already finish this here, right? With saying that omega stays constant, the radius obviously doesn't change, and the mass obviously doesn't change, at least not within the scopes that we're talking about here today. So clearly F remains a constant. What you're doing is you're completely arbitrarily, and with, without any reason to do so, adding up the linear velocity to the tangential velocity, right? You have a your tangential velocity, which absolute value is a constant, and you have the linear velocity, which is a constant either half, right? So the total force is just that. It's just the centrifugal force. The constant velocity does not contribute to the force. Omega stays constant throughout the whole way, the linear velocity does not influence the rotational period of the thing. It cannot do so. This is a pretty simple point here. And you should know that constant velocities do not uh, create a force on anything. 
you, you should know that by how you don't feel that you are flying in a plane apart from tiny turbulences. It's not difficult to move back and forwards in a plane. You can just do that. You don't feel a staggering amount of force on your body. Please, please, please. It's, it's, I'm at a loss of words of how you could think that you're better than the last 400 years of physicists or like middle to high school students who actually paid attention and not understand one of the more simpler concepts of, of classical mechanics. I'm at a loss of words. It's, it, it can only be explained with a huge amount of, of, of a completely wrong sense of grandeur and fundamentally lacking a physics education. Those are the only two things that make sense here. <sighs> yeah, glad we talked about it. So with that, I <laughs> thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. If you enjoyed it quite a bit, I would ask you to maybe consider subscribing. I would enjoy it quite a bit. And with that, I hope you're having a nice day. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.